Welcome back, everybody, for part three of our midterm review. Um, we are currently on page five, so let's get back to it. Number 23, which is a pair of parallel planes? Okay, now, key vocab again, parallel, okay, non-intersecting. Um, they run alongside each other and are never going to touch. Um, and planes, a little different in our lines, kind of like our tabletops, where it's um, going across in its own geometric space. So taking a look at our answers here, Okay, DEO and LFG. So DEO is this front portion. All right. Um, again, when we're naming planes, only three letters at a time. LFG, L, um, FG. Now, this one right away, we see that we have the front portion and the back portion, and you, you got to think of it as a 3D dimensional object where it, it is actually parallel right there. So this is end up going to be your answer. Let's just take a look at something that's not going to work. Um, EFG is up top, okay, NJI, um, NJI is off to the side here. Now, what you got to imagine is it's going to rise up. This is coming across. They would intersect, so it wouldn't be that one. Um, real quick, DEO, DEO is the front portion, NHG, um, NH, and then G again is right here, uh, so they're intersecting. NJK on the bottom. And NJI, again, automatically we see these letters repeating, so it can't be that as well. There's our parallel planes, okay? Um, 24, use the figure below. So the cube shown, AD, line AD and line HG are what? Well, we covered three types in class. Parallel, perpendicular, and skew, all right? So here's AD, highlight this a little bit, going across. Um, here's HG. Now, again, you have to be a little creative in your mind and think to yourself, this is in the front coming across. This is in the back coming across. It may look like they're going to intersect right here, but in this three-dimensional object, they actually are not going to overlap. Okay, so this one's going to end up being skew, which are lines that are not intersecting and not parallel. Okay, um, it, it, again, use your mind, be a little creative, all right, and try to visually see that. Okay, number 25. In the figure, angle 6 and angle 3 are, well, let's highlight them. Here's angle 6. Here's angle 3. All right. Um, again, remember that we can close this off. You'll notice they're on the interior, and they're also consecutive on the same side. So you can call this same side interior or consecutive. Consecutive interior. Okay, which again... These are kind of the unique pair in the, in the fact that they are supplementary, which means they have to 180. It's the only one of the special languages we learned that does that. Okay? Um, very good. Let's see here. Number six. In the figure, angle six and angle two are, again, let's highlight them. So, angle six is right there. Angle two is right there. They're both on the same corner, like top right. Same corner is corresponding. All right? Um, so, we covered... Same side interior, corresponding. The other two are alternate interior and alternate exterior. Okay, just to give you a quick example of that, alternate interior for this picture would be like 5 and 3. Alternate exterior would be something like 1 and 7. Okay, so keep in mind the interior, exterior idea. Those are our four big ones. You'll definitely expect to see that again. All right, 27. Uh, the measure angle 1, the figure below, PQ and RS are parallel. Oh, find the measure angle 1 below. If this is 61 degrees, now you have a, we have a bag of tricks that we can use right here, okay? We can do whatever we'd like. If this is 61 degrees, straight across vertical angles, 61 degrees. Well, now, these two angles are consecutive interior, which we know are supplementary. So I can say 61 degrees plus angle 1, measure angle 1, um, equals 180 degrees. Just subtract 61 over. 119 degrees. We're all good. Okay. You could have also said corresponding. This is 61, which forms a linear pair. Um, alternate exterior angles form a linear pair. Plenty of ways to solve that, whatever you feel the most comfortable doing. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Number 28, the figure. L, line L is parallel to line N, and R is a transversal, which of the following is not necessarily true. Okay. So we've got a picture here. Let's start analyzing our answers. Angle 8 is congruent angle 2. All right. So 
these are a pair of alternate exterior, which we know from our theorem in class that they are going to be congruent. So if this one holds up to be true, again, make sure we're reading the directions. That one's going to, we're going to cancel that one out then. 5 and 3, alternate interior, um, which again, we know in class by theorems must be congruent as well. So that's not going to work. 7 and 4, okay. Now this is kind of unique, well, different than the fact that this is like a, on the outside, this is on the inside. Um, there's really no connection there, right? So I'm going to hang off on that one. How about 2 and 6? 2 and 6 are corresponding. They are congruent. All right. The only one that's not necessarily true then is part C. Here's another thing to help you guys out. These pictures are here to help you, not hurt you. Angle 7 is clearly an obtuse angle. Angle 4 is clearly an acute, just by visually looking at it. Um, therefore, they're not going to be the same. They, they can't be by definition. Okay. All right. Let's see if we can get a couple more pages done. Uh, number 29. In the figure shown, eight, line HC is parallel to line TD, and the measure of angle ABC is equal to 141, which the following statements is false. Again, use your picture to your advantage. So ABC is 141. I'm going to go ahead and label that. Now, I personally like to label everything right away, so I have it there for reference. 141, 141. Um, angle BED will be 141. Angle GEF will be 141. All right? Um, everything else has to be supplementary to those angles, basically. So 180 minus 141 is 39. Fill in the remaining gaps. Okay. Now, start looking at our answers. The measure angle DEF is 39 degrees. DEF. That works. Okay. So that's true. We don't want that one. But the measure angle GEF is 141. GEF 141 again true. All uh, right, ABH and AEG are corresponding. Um, here's AE, ABH, AEG. They are on the same corner, so they would be corresponding. Clearly, this leads us with our last answer, which is HBF. Okay, and AED are alternate exterior. Um, notice that AED is on the interior. That does not work. It's false. Good. Okay. Um, number 30, find the slope of the line passing through the points. These formulas, again, will be provided for you. Okay. It's good that you know them. Uh, again, in the real world, you don't really have to memorize. You can look it up in reference. But change of y's over change of x's. Here's my x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. Let's just put things, substitute things into our formula. Negative 3 minus 6 divided by 3 minus negative 5. All right, up top, we end up with negative 9 divided by 3 minus negative becomes 3 plus 8. There we go, negative 9 over 8. Um, if I was to see this slope on a graph, because it's negative, it would be falling. Okay, it's good to make that connection as well. If it was positive, it would be rising. Um, a zero slope is horizontal. Undefined slope is vertical. All right. Okay. Number 31, classify the angle, or sorry, triangle BCD. Um, three sides congruent. Okay, so I could call this an equilateral triangle um, by its sides. If they ask you to classify this by its angles, because I know all three sides are the same, therefore all three angles got to be the same, this would be called an equal angular. Triangle, and that's by its angles. Okay, so um, we have acute, we have obtuse, we have right as far as angles go, we have equilateral, scaling, and isosceles for sides. So again, more key vocab. Make sure you're familiar with it. Okay, number thirty-two. Name an acute triangle. By definition, acute triangle, all three angles must be less than ninety. Okay, we actually have three triangles here: um, ADB. DCB and ABC. Um, so the only one that has all three angles less than 90 would be this small one over here, triangle BDC. Keep in mind also that you could name this differently. You could name this triangle BCD. You could name this triangle CDB. You get the idea, etc., etc. As long as it's these three letters, you're in good shape. 
Um, number 33, how many obtuse angles can an isosceles triangles ha triangle have? Um, maximum of one. All right. We had a good conversation in class. The most obtuse angles you can ever have in any triangle has got to be one because after that you're going to be over 180, which would then be no longer a triangle. Okay? So keep that in mind as well. Let's see if we can get one more page in here. Um, 34. Exterior angles theorem. The two inside angles add up together to equal the outside. Okay? So I know 62 plus x can equal the outside. Subtract 62 from both sides, we end up getting x equals 58. Okay? Um, good. Number 35, find the value of x. Three angles of a triangle have to add up to 180. So x plus 168 equals 180. Subtract x equals 12. All right? Um, again, Fairly simple stuff. We've covered a class multiple times. Same idea for 36, except a little bit more involved. All three angles have to equal 180. So create your equation up. 2x plus x minus 10 plus 55 equals 180. Combine like terms. 3x plus 45 equals 180. Subtract. 135. Okay. Um, divide by 3. X equals, let's see here, 45. All right? Um, again, if you really would have to, like to and have the time, you're going to take this, plug it back in. 45 times 2 gives me 90 degrees. 45 minus 10 gives me 35 degrees. So you can double check. 90 plus 35 plus 55, 180, all's well. Um, lastly, 37. Again, here's a great example of exterior angles theorem. Refer to the figure below. Measure angle A equals what? Interior, I'm going to call this X. The two interior angles okay, add together to equal the exterior angle. So X plus 39 equals 106. Subtract 39 from both sides. All right, 106 minus 39. Let's do a little bit of math real quick. 67 degrees. Okay, so the measurement angle A would equal 67 degrees. All right, um, that concludes the next four pages. Tune in real soon for our last few pages, and again, good luck studying.